Thank you, Christina. Uh, hi, everybody. Welcome to today's talk on simplifying streaming data transforms with Wasm. So today we're going to cover a little bit about what WebAssembly is and how um, we use WebAssembly in our data transforms uh, feature within, within the Red Panda streaming platform. Talk a bit about the data transforms architecture uh, and the associated use cases. Uh, I'll give a live demo and then we'll, we'll get to Q&A at the end. So let's dive in. Let's get started by talking about WebAssembly um, or WASM as it's, a, as it's abbreviated. WebAssembly is a, a low level portable binary format. So it's a compilation target for multiple language, languages. The idea is not to write directly in, in, in WebAssembly, but to write in a higher level language like C, C++, Go or Rust or any other language that compiles down uh, essentially into, into a WASM module. It's designed to complement JavaScript, uh, essentially designed to complement JavaScript on the web. Um, JavaScript has uh, allowed the, uh, such a rich web experience, right? Being able to ship code uh, from the server down to the client and run that code in, in your browser has revolutionized uh, web applications. WebAssembly is like the next level, right? Because you can compile the code. It's uh, a lot smaller, a lot more portable. So it's easier to, to ship around and ship down, down to the browser. And unlike JavaScript, which is an interpreted language, WebAssembly uh, is compiled. So um, it also runs a lot closer to, to, to native speeds. So it's smaller, easier to ship around and essentially faster. And it can work alongside JavaScript as well. So you can call WebAssembly functions from, from JavaScript and, and vice versa. It's around 20x faster than JavaScript because uh, essentially um, all, you have, all the browser has to do or the server-side application has to do is decode the, the, the WebAssembly um, module and, and run the code. Whereas JavaScript has to be uh, parsed and, and interpreted. At Red Panda, we think what JavaScript has done for the web, Wasm can do for server-side applications. Uh, and that's exactly what we're doing with our, our data transforms engine. We are uh, shipping a WebAssembly engine in a server-side application and, uh, and essentially flipping on its head, right? Allowing developers to ship custom code into the server and then and therefore change the behavior of, uh, of the server-side application. So let's uh, cover the details as to exactly sort of how that works. But before we begin, let's just um, give a brief overview of, of, what, of what Red Panda is. So Red Panda is a, a modern streaming platform for mission critical workloads. It's fast, simple, and reliable. So it's designed from the ground up in C++ to gain full performance of, of modern hardware. So be able to run across all of the cores on a multi-core architecture, um, uh, use lots of memory and um, benefit from faster IO subsystems. So when we're talking about SSDs and things like NVMe drives, um, Red Panda is able to, to, to leverage those technologies. So you'll find that Red Panda is very good at scaling up uh, as well as scaling out. It's a distributed system, right? So it scales across many, many, many machines. And this enables new use cases that require high throughput and, and low latency. But because Red Panda is so efficient, it also uh, can get equal um, or more performance from essentially fewer servers. And, and what this means to you is it will reduce your, your infrastructure costs. It's simple for operators to deploy and manage, and it's simple for developers to, to adopt and use. Red Panda fully supports the Kafka API. So out of the box, it supports the entire ecosystem of Kafka related tools. So whether it's producers and uh, consumer implementations, client libraries written in various uh, languages or in 
integrations with, with other third party systems. Uh, these tools will, will, will simply work with, with Red Panda. And because Red Panda is shipped in a single uh, binary, it doesn't depend on any uh, external systems. Um, this reduces the risk from sort of operational complexity. By default and at its core, Red Panda is uh, essentially a distributed, uh, durable, uh, fault tolerant transaction log. Red Panda uses the raft consensus algorithm to replicate data um, between all of the servers in, in a Red Panda cluster. And um, we, it uses Raft for, for everything. So not only data replication, but also replication of states and metadata. And it's also used for uh, failure recovery. Uh, so the Raft algorithm also provides things like leader election. If, the, um, if, a, if a server in the, in the Red Panda cluster fails, then Raft will automatically re-elect the leaders and Red Panda will remain operational. And this allows uh, the uh, this allows Red Panda to deliver very predictable performance, even at very high loads. So now we know a bit about Red Panda. Let's talk about how the data transforms feature uses WebAssembly, and, and uh, essentially relies on a on, on a WebAssembly engine to run custom server side functions within the streaming platform itself. Data Transforms uh, allows developers to write uh, essentially custom JavaScript functions and soon to be uh, whatever language uh, you want, as long as that, that, that code compiles down into a WASM module. And you can deploy JavaScript or these WASM, uh, WASM modules into uh, Red Panda, into your streaming uh, platform and run uh, simple data transforms against your, your streaming data, essentially on, on the topics within, within Red Panda. The premise here is you, it reduces the data ping pong in and out of the system without something like data transforms and without being able to run custom functions uh, in the streaming platform, you uh, have to essentially uh, operate uh, an external stream processing application like uh, Apache Spark or Flink or something like Materialize to read or stream the data out of the uh, out of Red Panda, out of your sort of streaming platform to run simple functions and then write the results back into your streaming platform, incurring the additional bandwidth and also incurring sort of the internal uh, mechanics of the streaming platform, such as uh, data replication and, and storage. So with uh, data transforms, being able to run JavaScript and WebAssembly modules within the platform itself allows you to perform things like data validation, data normalization, filtering, and routing within the platform itself without the data having to ever leave, uh, uh, leave, leave the platform. Let's talk a little bit about the architecture of how uh, the, the WebAssembly engine is used by Red Panda. Uh, here we'll discuss a bit about tooling, the storage mechanism uh, of the of the functions, and uh, the execution uh, the, the execution of those functions via the WebAssembly engine. From a tooling perspective, uh, Red Panda comes with a command line tool called RPK, and the idea is to make the developer experience uh, uh, as easy uh, as possible. So um, you can run RPK, WASM generate, and essentially the, the command line tool will create boilerplate code for you. Um, you'll have the, the WASM API that Red Panda provides um, with lots of templated code. And essentially then you can just go in, um, uh, complete your function, fill in the function um, and deploy that module into, into your streaming platform. From a storage perspective, those functions, whether they're JavaScript or WASM modules, are stored within a compacted topic within Red Panda. And therefore, because it's uh, essentially a, a topic, we can leverage things like Raft to uh, replicate those functions around to every server in the Red Panda cluster. And therefore, the functions are available to
perspective, uh, there's a couple of flavors here. So the first one is um, an asynchronous um, version of the of the WASM engine. This is for stateful one-shot transformations, and I'll go into the details behind this on, on the next slide. The async engine is currently out in tech preview uh, in Red Panda, and we welcome um, feedback on the API and, and the developer experience so that we can iterate and improve, improve it over time. The second version of, of the WebAssembly engine in Red Panda is, is what we're calling the synchronous engine. Uh, and this is where we will embed the WebAssembly engine directly in the Red Panda process and run the custom functions on the hot read path. So essentially as part of a as part of a fetch request coming from, from the consumers. So let's talk about a little, about the, uh, a little bit about the differences between these, these two architectures and um, um, the different characteristics that they, they're able to deliver. Starting with the uh, asynchronous engine. Um, so as I said, this is currently out in, in tech preview. It sits as a, a sidecar uh, process to the core Red Panda process. So essentially, um, on every server in the Red Panda cluster, you've got the broker process running. And uh, to the side of that, you also have the um, uh, WebAssembly process uh, running as well. When you deploy a function into, into Red Panda, you tell it what topic you want the function to essentially read from or, or consume from. Um, and you tell it what uh, child topic you want to materialize the output from the function to. And the, uh, the engine handles all the mechanics here for you. So they will automatically create you your child topic or child topics if you're, if you're, uh, if you're routing your messages. And here you get a one-to-one -one partition matching against the parent. So if you have a, a parent topic with say a single partition and 3x replication, your uh, child topic will have one partition, 3x replication, and those replicas uh, will be located on the same, uh, the same servers, the same brokers essentially as the parents. So it, it essentially mirrors the, the, the parent setup. In the async, async engine, we call this uh, uh, one shot stateful transformations. And essentially what that means is for every message that you write into your topic um, and for every replica of that message, um, because those, um, if you have if you have a replication factor on your topic, that message will be copied essentially to the to the followers by the the RAF consensus algorithm. So for every message and every replica of the message, the function will run. Uh, locally on on mirrored child partition. So it's a, it essentially runs once for every message and every replica of the message. And it's stateful because essentially this is running asynchronously within, within the streaming platform itself. So you can think of it as the function is uh, consuming from the parent topic, running the function and then producing onto the child topic uh, asynchronously. So the state component of this is, um, is the, the function or the, the, the process that's running the function has to maintain its offsets against the parent topic. So if there is a failure or the um, broker needs to restart, the function knows where it got to, uh, um, will offset its process up to, and then it can continue continue processing from that point on. Because the function runs um, on every uh, on every broker uh, against every replica of the message, the transforms uh, are assumed to be idempotent, right? So your replica sets uh, stay in sync; and they're identical. So let's have a quick look at um, the this from an architectural perspective. I mean, typically you'd have you'd have three brokers uh, in, in your cluster, um, but it's easier to, to visualize with just two in this case. So here we have um, two Red Panda brokers running on separate separate servers. We have our, um, our co-processor internal topic. So we've 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 written our uh, data transform. And we've deployed 
uh, into, into Red Panda via the raft replication mechanism. This is then copied out to every, every broker. Um, so it's available for, for, for running on every, on, every, on every broker too. The green topic here is our parent topic. Um, and you can see the producers writing into to the lead partition for, for that topic. And then Raft is also replicating those messages out to, to the followers on the, on, uh, on the other broker here. Internally within the uh, stream processing engine itself, there's another process called Pacemaker. Um, and this is what's doing our, um, this is what's uh, essentially providing the stateful one-shot transformation logic. So Pacemaker um, is consuming the messages from the parent partition and also the, uh, also the replica. It's uh, running the messages through the uh, WASM engine. And in this case, this is the, the Google Chrome's V8, V8 engine, which sits in the sidecar process. Uh, and the result is then materialized or produced onto the, onto the child partition. Again, this is happening um, uh, separately on the, on the follower, on the replica. So the same, um, um, the same state is generated in the child partition on, on the replica. And because um, the, 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 the message at the, par at the parent level has already been replicated by the raft consensus algorithm, we don't need to replicate the results um, at the child level. Replication has already happened and we've assumed that the function is item potent um, uh, and has generated the same, the same message on, on both, the, both the child partitions. So let's talk about the differences between the async and the synchronous engine. But the, our engineering team is working on the synchronous version of this uh, right now. And the difference is here, the WebAssembly engine, so the, the V8 engine will run inside the core Red Panda process. And it will run on the hot read path. So the results and the functions will run and lazily materialize um, the results on uh, for every fetch request that consumers send in to, into Red Panda. How this is all tied together is via a concept called data policies. So a data policy uh, essentially creates a relationship between uh, a topic, a, um, a data transform, so your custom function, and a consumer. So when a consumer connects into Red Panda and starts reading messages from the topic via the data policies, it will check the data policies and see if there's a, an associated uh, data transform and function. And if there is, it will run that function as part of the fetch request on the hot read path and, and the results will be streamed directly down to the consumers. So here you're trading storage for uh, uh, essentially CPU. Whereas in the async engine, you're materializing the results and therefore storing the results within, within Red Panda itself. Here, you're not storing the results, you're streaming them directly down to, to the consumer. But because the function is run on every fetch request, uh, this takes more processing, processing power. So whilst you'll be able to get more performance from the sync engine and it's for low latency transforms, um, you you do so by um, incurring the, the processing costs essentially and not having to store the message. So you're, you're trading storage for, for processor here. What's really nice about the sync engine is it allows you to apply uh, essentially different views over the same topic. So because you can create data policies for different consumers, uh, and, and here we're talking about uh, consumer group IDs and things like that, if um, you have a different policy per, uh, per consumer, then essentially that consumer will see a different view of the same over the same topic because the, 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 the messages streaming from that topic begin, are getting modified in flight as they're streamed down to, down to the consumer. And if a different consumer has a different function associated with it, they'll see, they'll see a different uh, essentially view of, of that data. So visually, what this looks like, I think the architecture is uh, a lot simpler. So um, we still have our internal uh, co-processor topic where our functions are stored. We still have our, 
our parent uh, topic, but here it's not really a parent, it's just, I mean, it's just a normal topic. Um, and we do away with the child topic in this case, and we move the sidecar process into, into the Red Panda process inside the, inside the Red Panda process directly. Then when consumers connect into Red Panda and want to read data from, from the topic, they do so by checking the data policies. And if there is a function associated with that consumer, the function will run against the, against the data as it's streaming down. What's nice about the V8 engine is it has a concept um, uh, called V8 isolates, which essentially will allow you to run uh, each data transform in a, I guess, a sandbox area within, within the WebAssembly engine itself. So you can put some safeguards around uh, what that function is able to do in terms of accessing memory um, and, um, and processor. And therefore um, uh, you can safeguard and essentially protect the functions from each other and also protect the, the wider Red Panda process. Okay, let's talk about uh, use cases. So, um, I mean, the possibilities are, are, are infinite because you can essentially write whatever transformations you like. They are really custom, custom functions. The, I guess the initial uh, ideas that we have for, for this functionality is for data validation, uh, data normalization. And here, because the schema registry is uh, embedded in the, in the broker um, application itself, um, you could write a data transform to um, in, uh, basically pull a schema from the schema registry and make sure the message is streaming through your topic, adhere to that uh, uh, schema, or even use it to, to change the schema as the, as the um, messages are streaming through. And the, the demo I'm going to give next actually actually does that. So it receives um, messages in JSON format. It applies a data transform function to uh, transform those JSON messages into Avro messages and materialize those on a, on a child topic. Data masking is, a, is another good use case. So if you do have, say, GDPR requirements, um, you could use uh, data transforms to uh, mask your PII information as the data is streaming through streaming through Red Panda. And here, the parent topic will have uh, the original message. So um, um, that's the full sort of full fidelity view of the information. Uh, in this case, you might want to apply ACLs on that topic to restrict access to to downstream consumers so they don't see that PII information. But then the child topic could have a different set of ACLs applied to it to open that up to a wider audience because the data has been obfuscated and is therefore safe to, safe to consume. Filtering is a good use case. So filtering out messages altogether or filtering out values from, from within messages. And um, you can also route messages as well. So you're not fixed the writing to a single child topic. Um, you can actually decide to uh, route messages to different child topics. So kind of a fan out uh, process in, in, in this case. Uh, the synchronous engine as well, because it um, uh, uh, essentially runs for every message on, on the hot read path, this will allow future integrations with say, um, stream processing engines where you'd be able to do things like predicate pushdown, um, and, and do sort of live filtering of the data that way. Uh, we'd love to hear your ideas. And if you want to chat more about use cases, then um, please reach out to us on our, on our community Slack and I'll share the link um, with, you, with you at the end of the talk. Okay, cool, let's, uh, let's move on to the demo. So um, just before I switch to, to the demo, uh, just to give an example of the, the templated or boilerplate code that that the command line tool provides. Uh, and I, I, this is exactly what I use to generate the demo code. Um, so you can run RPK wasm generate, give, give it a project name. Um, in, in, in the demos case, I think I've called it Avro transformation. You get um, a couple of files that are sort of pre-populated for you. So package.json in this case, your 
JavaScript dependencies. Um, you get a source directory with the main.js in this case, and that's where you add your transformation logic. Um, and I'll show you the, the example in a second. You get a test directory where um, in the JavaScript case, you get mocker, your, your mocker tests. Um, so you can do unit testing on your code. And then webpack.js just uh, essentially can be used to package everything up into a module for deploying in, into Red Panda. So let's take a look at what that looks like in practice. Okay, so um, all of the code has been published to the Red Panda data GitHub repository. And, and in there, there's a repository called Red Panda uh, dash examples. Uh, there's lots of examples in here, um, but the one we're focusing on today is in the WASM subdirectory. And here is my um, uh, generated code. My project name is transform underscore Avro. Uh, there's a couple of other nice sort of helpers in here as well. So there's a compose.yaml. Uh, if you want to run this example uh, on your own laptop, you can do so with, with Docker. Um, there's nothing nothing complicated in here. So it essentially spins up a, a single Red Panda uh, Docker container on, on your laptop and, and exposes the uh, uh, necessary ports, et cetera, that you need. And there is an associated Red Panda configuration file. Um, most of this is pretty standard. The only thing to note is uh, enable underscore coproc is set to true. And this just tells Red Panda to start the, the WebAssembly engine, the, the sidecar process, essentially. Let's take a quick look at the code. So here you can see uh, the, the templated code. We've got our webpack and our, our package.json files that were generated for us. I've added a readme, um, so you can follow uh, along with the demo uh, in your own time. And we've got a source and a test directory. So let's have a look at the main.js in here. So a lot, of, a lot of this and most of it, probably 90% of the code in here is boilerplate and generated for you uh, by the command line tool. I've added a couple of things. So uh, an additional dependency on the avro.js library uh, for doing our JSON to avro transformations. I've named my parent topic. Uh, and the parent topic in this case is gonna be called market underscore activity. Admittedly, I've been uh, lazy and I've hard coded my Avro schema in here, um, but I could uh, also fetch that from, and I should have fetched this from the schema registry, but it's easier to, to see in the code here. And here is my um, transformation function called to Avro. And here I um, essentially just parse the past message, um, assuming a JSON message. Um, and then I uh, encode that message um, as an Avro, uh, a binary Avro message using the schema, schema above. The rest of this is uh, pretty much default, but you get, this is essentially the contract with the, um, with the streaming engine with Red Panda. So Red Panda will uh, call process record and pass you a record batch. And then you're free to do whatever you like with that record batch. Um, in, in this case, I'm just mapping the rec each record and calling my two Avro function. And I'm writing the results um, to a child topic called result. Um, here, the essentially what you have to pass back is a, um, is a map with the key set to the child topic name that you'd like, which is also generated for you. Um, and then the transforms uh, record batch as the value. Um, if you're in a routing case, you can add as many of these entries as you like. So you could have results two, three, four, and a different set of transformation uh, transformed records uh, associated with each of those. And that's how the WebAssembly engine and, and Red Panda will route the messages to different child topics. Okay, so let's run up the demo. First of all, um, and actually we can uh, we can follow along with the README here as well. So the fir first 
So okay, so you have a single single container running. And then let's uh, deploy and uh, build and deploy the uh, the, um, the code. So first of all, we'll run npm install to install our dependencies. I've already run this, so it shouldn't take long. There we go. Next, we will run our test. So let's run our, in this case, JavaScript mocker test, uh, which is passed. So our unit test just runs and calls our JSON to every function. So that's working as expected. And then let's run npm run build, which will call our webpack configuration to bundle everything up, ready for deploying to Red Panda. So here we should have a distribution directory. And in here, uh, it's still called main.js, but essentially that's all the bundled code and any dependencies uh, also bundled into that, into that one file. Okay, next step is to create our um, parent topic uh, market activity. Uh, so let me just copy that. Okay. And let's deploy our data transform to Red Panda. So we're using the RPK tool, so we can do RPK was in deploy. We're going to pass our bundled up main.js file, and we're going to name function JSON to, to our bro. Send that in. Okay. One thing to notice is if you, despite the, despite the function being deployed, you still only have the uh, parent topic. You also now have the coprocessor internal topic. So our function has been deployed into Red Panda, but the child topic isn't created um, or materialized until, until we start calling the function. So let's do that next. In this green tab over here, <clears throat> there's lots of consumers. So um, the command line tool RPK uh, can consume from, from Red Panda. Um, we're going on the left-hand side, we're gonna consume from our parent topic, market activity. And on the right-hand side, we are going to consume from the child topic, and that's going to be called market activity underscore result underscore. So let's set that off as well. There we go. And then I have a, um, a producer here. Um, it's written in Scala, um, but it's uh, essentially going to uh, write some data uh, in JSON format. It's market activity data, so it's just downloaded from the from the NASDAQ website. Um, Hi, James. Sorry to interrupt. Um, it seems like some people can only see your browser window. They're not able to see the actual terminal. Is there any way that you can share that? Oh, okay. Yeah, of course. Uh, my apologies for that. Let's... Um, Let me see if I can change that. How does that look? Looks good on my end. Yeah. Okay. My apologies. Okay, so um, that's the trouble with doing live demos, isn't it? Let me. Um, I mean, there wasn't much to see on this side of things, but I, what I will do is just flip back to the code. Uh, I think you actually saw the code, right? You didn't see the terminal window, so that's fine. Um, in the terminal window, essentially what I've done is uh, run through the run through the readme. I've um, deployed, let's see the code up here. I've created my, my parent topic. I then, 
called the um, I used the commanding tool RPK wasn't deployed to push the code um, the bundled up JS file in this case into Red Panda and I've called the function JSON to Avro. Um, so so that was run here and deploy successful. And if we list the topics in Red Panda, you can see we have our code processor internal topic here where our function is stored and we have our parent topic created, um, which is called market activity. On the consumer side, nothing to see here yet, luckily. So uh, on the left-hand side here, I've just uh, spun up a consumer to read from the, from the parent topic, market activity. And on the right-hand side here, I've spun up a consumer to read from the topic, market activity result. And then on the producer side, I have a Scala-based producer, which will essentially um, write some data into our market activity topic. It's JSON formatted data um, that I've just downloaded from, from the website. Um, and it's, it's essentially a simple market data for the S&P 500 stock ticker. So let me run that up. I slowed the I slowed the stream down here so it's easier to read. So you can see the key here is the stock ticker SPX and JSON formatted messages, which just summarizes sort of the day's market activity for for that stock. Now, if we go back to the consumer side, you can see here on the left hand side, uh, this is our parent. The message messages streaming through in JSON format, and then via our data transform here on the right hand side the child topic the messages are streaming through in in the binary avro avro format that will run for 15 20 minutes so we don't have time to to sit and watch it um so essentially that that concludes the that concludes the demo we can flip back to the to the slides. Now let me just make sure you can see the slides. Okay. Right, thanks very much. Let's uh let's go to some some Q and A. Okay, so the first question we have on Q and A is, uh, what is the performance impact of running a data transform? Okay, it's a great question. Um, well, essentially, it varies, right? Because the um, the data trans the data transforms are uh, completely custom. You can uh, write whatever data, data transforms you want, and that's going to have an impact on on, on performance. Um, if the transform is really simple, then there's not going to be much impact. But if the, the transformation function is pretty complicated, or you're doing something like uh, calling out to an external API um, for, uh, uh, say, in enrichment uh, for a thing, then that's going to slow down the slow down the stream and um, uh, you'll see the, the the performance difference there. The um, with the asynchronous engine, that's obviously running asynchronously within the broker itself. So the parent topic um, won't be affected. But then um, the messages are being asynchronously read topic, run through the function, and produce onto the child topic. So what you'll find is the child topic will in 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 that case will slightly lag behind uh, lag behind the parent. And the idea is we will provide monitoring metrics around uh, around this function, so you can track sort of how, uh, like you do now with with Red Panda, and you can see and monitor consumer lag. You'll be able to monitor data transform lag as well because it's essentially the same thing, but running internally within the broker itself. Okay, so are there any? limitations on what you can do with WASM. For example, HTTP calls for transforms. Um, so, so no, that, that 
there is, um, is that data transforms are intended to be relatively simple and essentially a one-to-one -one or um, um, a mapping of, of, of messages. Uh, the intention, and there isn't a sort of any framework around this, but the intention is to not um, uh, do things like aggregations or maintaining states in, in, in your data transform. So um, you wouldn't want to use it for, uh, for window functions and, and, and complicated aggregations. For this, uh, we would still recommend using a sort of a stream processing application like Spark or Flink. Um, they're more geared up to, to, to do these uh, more complicated transformations. But if you're familiar with say Spark um, and uh, sort of the, the, the sim more simple map and filter functions that you get in Spark, they would be ideal and perfect for, uh, for, for data transforms. Um, uh, and they will, they will run nice and quickly. So there, there aren't really any limitations on, on what you can do. If you wanted to do external HTTP calls out to say enrich your data, you're, you're free to do so. But um, what we would say is uh, it's probably best in that case to make sure you benchmark your, your, your code. Um, essentially benchmark the, the throughput and latency you get uh, before deploying the function and then do the same after you've deployed the function. So you can uh, at least understand the performance implications um, and the different characteristics of the, of the functions. So are there any templates for transforms in other languages? Great question. I mean, um, uh, not right now. So, uh, like I said, the um, the the initial version of of data transforms, which is out now, is the the asynchronous version. Um, this uh, is out in tech preview, and as part of the tech preview, we have uh, essentially just released templates in JavaScript. Uh, this is so that we can. Um, uh, communicate with users and work with users just to understand and get feedback on the API, feedback on the templates and the developer experience. And then we can start iterating and improving on it from, from there. Um, we'll be introducing other languages uh, via WebAssembly uh, uh, in the future. Um, so uh, not only will we have a WebAssembly engine running in Red Panda, you'll also be able to then write in the, the transformations in any language that you prefer, as long as it has a associated uh, WASM compiler and you can compile that down into a, into a WASM module. At that point, we will uh, most definitely pro be providing templates um, uh, for, for data transforms in other languages, probably starting with uh, C, C++ uh, and Go. So there's another uh, question around performance implications. Will it be feasible to write stateful type functions? <laughs> uh, and uh, the follow-up question for that, it was never mind, uh, I answered it. Yeah. Um, so, so that's right, yeah. I mean, uh, at least initially it won't be feasible. I mean, it's feasible, you can uh, do what you want. Do what you want, but there will be performance implications if you start maintaining state within within the WASM engine. You, you don't really want to be to, to do that because it will affect your sort of throughput and latency. Um, there's no reason that in the future we won't expand the the ability to to provide um, sort of more complex functions. We'll certainly be ex expanding the API to to handle common um, common functions like um, uh, adding init functions, uh, for example. So if you wanted to do any initialization before your um, data transforms uh, were to run, this could be like downloading um, schema from the schema registry. Um, you could also do things like um, adding sort of timed functions to run as well if you wanted to keep downloading the schema and checking whether uh, there's been any schema updates, that kind of thing or loading um, reference data in, into memory, that kind of thing. So, I mean, what I would uh, 
employ you to do is if you do have any idea around what you would like to see from the, the data transforms engine um, and, and our use of WebAssembly, then please reach out to us on the community Slack um, and uh, we'll be able to, to have a chat with you about it and, and, and add, those, add those ideas onto our, onto our roadmap. Okay, will there be uh, support to allow pipelining of functions in the future? Again, this is a, a, a prime uh, example of that feedback. That's that's a that's a great idea. Again, we 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 have spoken about this internally. Our engineers are, are sort of speaking about all different sorts of uh, possible features we could add to data transforms. Pipelining functions is a is a great idea and something that we will we'll, we'll definitely add in the future. Um, uh, Let's uh, let's continue that discussion on on the community Slack, and um, I'm going to take these these ideas and and also open GitHub issues, right? So all of the code is is on GitHub, all of the issues are on GitHub as, as well. So if you do have any ideas for sort of feature requests around uh, our use of WebAssembly and the data transforms, then please also either either raise it with us on the community Slack or or open the issues directly yourselves. All right. uh, okay, so, oh, sorry, one, one final question. Um, what are some use cases where Spark or Flink would be more appropriate choice? And are there plans to have these capabilities be a replacement of all uh, Spark Flink use cases? I think I kind of answered that before, but um, like data transforms is great for sort of the map and the filter functions. When you're doing window functions, aggregations, and, and the other thing that pops into my mind here would be joins. If you're wanting to join streams together, these things at the moment best fit with, with Spark and Flink. But again, uh, there's no reason why we wouldn't think about adding these into, into Red Panda in the future. Those complicated functions, aggregations, windowing, maintaining state, doing joins on different parent topics, they're much more complicated to add into a streaming platform. You have to think about if you're joining two streams together, how you then have to join the key, you have to have a key, for example, and then you have to copy data over the network to, to match records together. Um, then it becomes a, a lot more complicated to implement and sort of changes from a stream, a streaming platform into a stream processing platform. Um, but they're, they're great. They're, that's great feedback and, and, and great discussions to have on, on the community Slack. Okay, thanks, Christina. Yeah, well, thank you so much to James for his time today, and thank you to all the participants who joined us. As a reminder, this recording will be on the Linux Foundation YouTube page later today. We hope you're able to join us for future webinars. Have a wonderful day.